economic collapse, martial law, social and civil war, aliens, human hybrids, Nephilim, the great deception, world chaos, tsunamis. You want to stay tuned for special edition, End Time Revelations with Pastor Henry Schaefer and Pastor Steve Hall. CSRE. I'm your host. Welcome to another episode of Project Seer. And I have in the studio with me my co-host as well, Steve Hall. You're here. Go and it's and good everybody. to be back on the program. I look forward to our Seer program and from the looks of things and talking to people on the street, brother, they do too. Yeah, I got a lot of people who like to tune in listening to Project Seer, special edition of End Time Revelation. And what we do here on the program, we take different prophecies, things that people have prophesied in the last days we bring it here and we put it out before the people and let everybody pray about it and see how god speaks to the body of christ in these last days and uh, so let me go ahead and tell you it, it is a uh, thursday the 21st of april and it's right at the top of the hour two o'clock so you listen at any other time than this it's a rebroadcast of projects here but if you're getting ready to leave out of your vehicle going into your home then you can just go ahead and make sure you're running there real real quick take your smartphone get a tablet Go to cwchrist.com, look on the right-hand side, here to click the red button, listen live anywhere in the world. Got a smartphone, got a tablet, you can do that as well. Uh, get on your smartphone, tablet, and go to Ustream, and you can download that free app. Look right on into our studio by typing in WUCC, and I want everybody to look over here and wave at the camera right over here. Everybody wave. Who are those who are listen, looking in and right I'm the good-looking one on the right, the far right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who these other people is. They just came with Brother Schaefer. They just the place as you go around. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we're going to go ahead and introduce our subject today. Our subject today, we're going to be talking about the lost books. We're going to be talking about the books of Enoch uh, and different ones that are here. But let's go ahead and introduce our panel that we have here today. Starting at my left, everybody who's looking in to be your left as well. We'll go around to the studio that way. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm James Price, and I'm glad to be here. All right. I'm Francis Pimentel, and I'm glad to be here. I'm Todd Burkhart, and I'm blessed to be here. There you go. And I'm J.T. Ramsey, and I'm blessed to be here as well. You got and Steve I'm, Hall right behind yeah, me. Yeah, and I'm, a, I'm the one on the far right. That's right. I'm sitting the right in the middle with the blue one. shirt. So anyway, we're going to be talking about the lost books. They've come from many miles away, all the way from Rome, Georgia. Ringo. Is it Ringo, 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 Georgia. Ringo, Chattanooga. Georgia. Yeah. Chattanooga come from Ringo, Georgia. Is that right? Ringo, is that what you call it? Ringgold. Ringgold, yeah. Georgia. And uh, that's a long ways from here. About yeah. five hours out. Yeah. yeah about Something that. like that. Well, thank you all for coming and being part of what we're doing here today. Uh, we've had you, James, you've been on the show with us before. Sure. The, uh, the uh, telephone visitors uh, input. So it's good to have you live in the studio with us here. You're the one bringing all the group with all the people. I feel like I'm on the Tell the Truth panel. <laughs> oh, yeah. Y'all remember that old show? If you, oh, you yeah. remember yeah. that, are you telling yeah. your age? <laughs> <laughs> you are, remember. but we do remember. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and begin uh, the, the books of Enoch, the lost books. James, I'm going to let you go ahead and pick it up, let you kind of drive this ship for the next uh, uh, hour or so. All right, all right. Well, I'm happy to, and I thank you for the opportunity. I praise God. And uh, we bring this to you very prayerfully. The lost books of the Bible I have found to be very much um, considered anathema by most leaders of the American church. Yep. And I as a, I agree with that. Uh, yep. I've I've been a um, I've been a pastor ordained, and uh, I don't have any regrets about those times but I'll, I'll tell you it is it is universal uh, almost uh, they they actually do not want their membership their people to know anything about the lost books and their descriptions of them are generally very vague might have even been something that they learned 20 years earlier in college seminary yeah uh, it it's it it's almost um, well. It's 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 absolutely 
the plan of Satan for a church leader to tell his people don't bother reading those it's like the catholic church telling them we're going to do our services in latin so you can't understand it it's the same type of thing um, as a matter of fact enoch starts out the book of enoch which you've mentioned it starts out verse one the word of the blessing of enoch how he blessed the chosen ones and the righteous who will be living in the day of tribulation when all the wicked men will be removed this is this is written for us it's written for the last generation and there are other lost books that state the same and we're going to be referring to those today in particular today i want to encourage your listeners um, this this is for lost people people that do not know christ perhaps they've read the bible they didn't feel it was uh enough validation although the bible the you know what i what i love about things as I get older is God is the winner. He's Amen. won. Yes, He's he won already. Right. And so what we know for sure, what we know for certain is that as God wins this war, um, he allows Satan to pull his scams off, move his chess pieces, his losing his losing plays and he has over the centuries removed a lot of very valuable information from the bible so that the bible remains today as the 66 books of the bible um, for me as a as a new believer i'll tell you the thing that clued me in god clued me in god clued right. me in period right. Amen. right and god kept me safe from the enemy i i by the grace of god i was not involved in the occult i didn't play with the ouija board i didn't do with the bloody mary thing mm -hmm. as a kid all the things that you learn about you're taught in school that's fun and st I, I didn't do any of those things i i did uh speak aloud to the powers that may be out there as i uh, I, I was i've always been a spiritually focused person i've had validated for many years that the the enemy the devil and all of his are are as real as all You're of right. us in here that's yeah. right they're oh, yeah. just Absolutely. as real and they have a lot more power and mm -hmm. actually a lot of that power is the fact that we can't see them and mm -hmm. we think that their thoughts are our thoughts or their their screamings and rantings and ravings in our yeah. head yeah. we think that that's us mm -hmm. but it's not us yeah. yeah so so by the grace of god god made me wonder when i came to him at age 20 why why is the sign of man the number six the sign of the antichrist 666 and why do we have 66 books of the bible okay that that that, uh, that to me that to me just said something's going on yeah well most okay. like the the bible that we have bridges the gap between man and satan well i wasn't thinking that at all i was thinking god was saying god was saying you know what the reason why there's only 66 books, books left is because Satan's had his hand in it. So every one of these books is 100% absolutely accurate. The Word of God, God inspired, God used men as his pens. Right. And I praise him and I'm grateful for him. Right. Yes, amen. But over the centuries, due to the councils, beginning with the, the first council and the Catholic Church and et cetera, they have weeded out, taken a... Taken a a big crowbar and pulled out of the Bible uh, books that uh, I think are essential now, just right. like Enoch says. Yeah, so when we look at this there, let me interject. So when we read the book of Jude, we know that Enoch, or Enoch, Enoch, everything you want to say, it, he's quoted in there. Right. So there's a quotation out of a book that he wrote in our Bible. Right. And then there's several Since of Since you so said that, let me let me interject your interjection yeah, okay. because it's important. It is because they're there. That's right. Uh, I've heard and read and seen other people talk about where, uh, no, Jude was not quoting the book of Enoch mm -hmm. because they look at their translation of the book of Jude and then the translation that they have in front of them or they've heard somebody else cite we're reading translations. Jude very clearly is a quote. Uh, I believe it's Jude, I actually, Jude 15. Okay. The Lord comes with 10,000s of his holy ones to carry out judgment on all men, to examine every soul among them who has committed ungodly acts. How many ungodlies in there? 
A bunch of them in there. <laughs> there is. There is. And, and uh, you know. The, so he's the, trying to get a, a message across about ungodly, isn't he? That's right. And you cannot allow anyone to water down, wash away, take away, disprove what Satan wants you to believe is, well, my pastor said that that's not true. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not a quote. It is a quote. Mm -hmm. It is a quote. Now, if I say God is good and then John over there says God is good, he's not quoting me. We are emphatic. God is good. Mm -hmm. And we speak that language. In this case, Jude had read Enoch. And what what was the book? Do you, do you have the um, the uh, the Enoch? This particular version I have? Yeah. I, well, no, just the... Uh, the chapter and verse that he refers to. You chapter one, Enoch chapter one. one in, yeah, it's, in it's what Enoch verse? one verses verse nine. Okay, there you Enoch go. Enoch one nine. There you go. And uh, and so, the 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 sad thing is when the church is filled with tares, which Jesus says you cannot pull the tares leave out there. without wounding the yep. wheat. He said leave them. Right. Mm -hmm. Then we have to also understand the wheat are required to go a little further than what satisfies the tares. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's God. That's God's providence. Right. So if, if a pastor says, you don't need to be reading that. Yes, you do. Yes, mm -hmm. you do. This is imperative for our generation. This prepares us. And I learned so much. As a matter of fact, uh, Adam and Eve, Abraham, Melchizedek, uh, Shem, Noah, uh, these, these men of God that the Bible teaches us so much about but but you know the beauty of of god's word is he doesn't have to redundantly do a replay every single book these books that were chiseled out of god's word they give us detailed information so that in genesis whereas he gave us great information in the book of enoch he didn't do a total replay a total reconstitution of noah's life in in the book of Genesis. That's right. These things are key. These things are key. And, uh, and there's so many things that I, as we were driving out here today, I wrote down uh, text after text after text after text of powerful, powerful God stuff. So you're telling us, you're telling us in, the, in our listening audience that there are in the scriptures, in our 66 books, there are quotations from extra biblical books that the writers, the authors of our Bible had read these books and they pulled a quotation out of that, put it into our Bible that is, uh, that is identified as being Holy Scripture, inspired of God, God-breathed, um, that those men read other books. And we're saying that they had a worldview that these other books, extra books like the Book of Enoch and different ones, formed their worldview so when they wrote a letter to someone, to a church, what have you, that worldview was imposed into that so that they fully understand it. And we won't really understand the meaning of what they were trying to get unless you read what they uh, have a, some kind of understanding you of what it. they had. Is that right? You nailed it. You nailed it. And, the, and so the, since you said it so very clearly, the worldview that Paul had or Jude had, Jesus had, of course, Jesus' worldview is, is the only accurate worldview. Right. When they would quote from these guys, it was an automatic. And the readers received it as an automatic. We are having to be retaught because our church has been watered down over the centuries. Uh, and, and where the scriptures say that a, a pastor is going to be held doubly accountable, a teacher right. is going to be held up twice as accountable, well, it's going to be this kind of thing. If you don't learn, if you read God's scriptures and then you're unwilling to continue learning God's scriptures, you just say, that's enough. That's enough for me. Yeah. That's what led me to God. Well, what you're doing is you're setting yourself up for uh, judgment from God. I, I wouldn't have said that 20 years ago because I didn't know. Right. But having learned what I've learned... I have, I know now that that's true. It's so much easier to, to explain things to a Christian that's, that's stumbling around. Man, what do I do? You know, we've got, we've got technology pulling at us for every minute of our day. Satan 
using enemy spirits in us and we're being Bombarded demonized with, yeah. and oppressed. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, we believe that, don't we, Steve? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> pushing, firm pushing, yeah. pushing, 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 mm -hmm. pushing. Right. Speaking in our minds so we misinterpret the the truth of what what we speak as uh, I just thought that mm -hmm. and thinking that we're the authors of those things. That's right. And those things are are totally incorrect. What what God's what the, what the book of Enoch, the book of Jubilees, the book of Jasher, the book of Ezra 4 and other great lost books do is they answer those questions for us so that we can better discern. Right. Discern things that the apostles were already they understood. They didn't have So any, what would be the first one? first book you would say that someone would need to a person to start off with. a person that wants to grow quickly in god mm -hmm. needs to read enoch chapters okay. 1 through 20 1 through 20 that's okay. a primer I, I as a matter of fact i would say that until we're dead we need to read enoch 1 through 20 once a month it's it's going to take you a whole half hour you know the, the the chapters are are so short but the chapter each one is a a, a smash yes, i mean it's a, yep. a, a Wow, how did I not know that let me before? Let me tell you something. Put I, it down. No. Let me tell you yeah. something I've always done is uh, because I have quoted different writers like Enoch and different ones, um, and I'm not sure where is it at in, uh, in, one of, in the Apocrypha where um, in the book of Hebrew it talks about how that, um, and he gives a long list of those who were um, in the hall of faith. You've heard of yeah. they were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted, they were slain with the sword. They wandered about in goat skins, in sheep skins, being destitute, afflicted. And you know what I'm talking about? Remember yeah, that quote Hebrews out, of, out of Hebrews 11? And then it talks about that one, and he says, and they were sawn asunder. And I'm not sure if you know this or not. Well, I'm just you kind of, you probably do, but the where it says that they were sawn asunder. Well, who was sawn asunder? Who was cut in half? What are they talking about? And when you go to the book of the Apocrypha, you read where tradition says, or the writing says, that they took Isaiah and put him in a hollow log and cut him in half. Mm -hmm. And without reading that book and putting the two together, you will not know the sawn asunder part was Isaiah in a hollow log being right. cut wow. together. So yeah. when I say, and I've, and I've taught that before from the pulpit saying, tradition says that he was put in a hollow log, right. cut in half in the book of Apoc in the Apoc one of the Apocrypha. Right. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Absolutely. So as long yeah. as you identify it, as long as you identify it like that, you see what I'm getting at? There's not a problem. Right. But someone says, well, you can't quote, you can't say anything. No, you don't understand the Bible and those writings in the Bible unless you put that together and you say, oh, it really means a whole lot more. Exactly. And it's already, it's already been revealed if you put the two writings together like Enoch, Jude, and different ones. And our imperative, our imperative as God followers is to have his worldview. Yeah. Why would we not? If, if he created us to glorify him and lead others to him, we need to think the way he thinks and know what he knows. And he's given it to us. Yeah. He's given it to us. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's too easy to play with my phone or, or any other uh, number of, of hobbies and things like that, uh, that that we really believe, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I go out with these guys. It's my opportunity to lead them to Christ uh, by my lifestyle. Uh, that's not soul winning. And that's not an excuse and you're, you're not doing your due diligence that God requires. Amen. Well, one of the things that really helped Steve and I with, because, uh, you know, you and I had discussed about uh, the book of Enoch, and you told me about different ones to uh, make sure we read and become familiar with. But when we started um, in this deliverance ministry, uh, and we're talking about the Nephilims, and, you know, from what the Scripture tells us in Genesis 6, where it talks about, about the giants, Mm -hmm. and the fallen angels coming down and you know so we only have that that snapshot that's all you have in the book of genesis and uh you then you have some other things some other allusions to giants and but you kind of what, what's going on yeah you know you don't really know if you if you read no more than that you'll never figure yeah, out the whole picture there's no explanation there's no that's explanations right. but when you read the book of enoch mm -hmm. like you was telling me say listen read this it's laid out go through it and it talks about tell us the 200 Two hundred. Tell, tell us about. Right. Tell the tell, tell the folks how they what their view will open up just of that part. Well, it'll be easier to read it. Yeah. So so in in Enoch six, which I think is uh, interesting because Genesis six tells us about the Nephilim. It's really easy to remember that Enoch six tells us about the Nephilim. Okay. It happened after the sons of men had multiplied that in those times daughters were born to them. 
and they saw that they were comely and beautiful. When the angels, the sons of heaven, saw them, they desired them and said to each other, Come on, let us choose wives for ourselves from the sons of men, and let us begat progeny. Then their leader, Simeaza, said to them, I fear that you will not agree to do this deed, and that I alone shall have to pay the penalty for such a great sin. And they answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath and bind ourselves by mutual imprecations that we will not change our minds but do this deed. And they swore all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations. They were two hundred in number that descended in the time of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. They called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn an oath on it and bound bound themselves by mutual imprecations. And then it goes into their names. Things that are interesting about this that we don't get from the book of Genesis. Now, Genesis is God's word. Right. Amen. I believe that this, when Enoch wrote it, was God's word. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a whole lot of theologians out there and, and people with a lot of paper hung on their walls that would say, oh, this has five distinct authors. It was written during. Your, your coming up with that is, is no more... Um, no more provable than than me saying emphatically this is the word of god Mm -hmm. what's happened is these have been hidden they were they were revealed in the 1800s exactly right Uh, india had a copy ethiopia was it ethiopia yes Yes. still have it in their bible yeah yeah they still have it in their bible right and so so uh one of the english explorers brought back a copy uh, after 20 or 40 years, he had it translated. Here we are. Then they find it in the Dead Sea Scrolls in the, in down, the 40s. Down. And, and so the four copies in the Dead Sea Scrolls are just like the way we verified the KJV. Yeah. It, this Enoch was verified. Yeah. So, so I, you know, I, I don't care about those arguments. You need to read it. The point is, the point is, don't stand around and argue. Don't immerse yourself in these details of of who says what nobody cares nobody cares god gave Just tell this me what to it us. says that's right tell we me. we need to know if you don't like the fact that in in the text of enoch it says that there are uh 450 foot giants versus um 45 foot giants yeah do, do you know do you know i i believe that there are authors today who write books who writes what God has given them through, uh, what number is that? Five. Number five, hold a second. Now do it. And uh, what we will do is um, we, they are authors today that are so anointed and they write that I believe that if they were to take some, now don't, don't laugh at me when I tell you this, but if they were to go back and someone was looking at some of their writings that they were going to use as canonization of scripture, that I believe some of their writings could be considered. Oh, yes. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Because God has has, has inspired that writing, mm-hmm. but it's not being canonized or anything. Did that make sense? Right. And yes. then when I read that book, when I read that book that an author is in, I'm going, this is speaking right to me like God yep. is Amen. speaking right through that well, person. Well, it's like James does that is always saying, so it's a witness, does it glorify God? It's a witness of the Spirit. Right. You understand? That? And that's what, that's what I looked at. Now, we always have to know the benchmark is the Word of God. Right. We always know that. I mean, you, even when you read something that someone else has written. It's the measuring need, stick. It's the measuring stick. Mm-hmm. How sure. does it line up? You know what I'm talking about? So that's oh, yeah. what we And, you know, we going got. back to Brother James's point, is I have read behind other critiquing theologians that were liberal, and they bring out this same P1 versus P2, and that it obviously was a translation from somebody else's writing that added to the book of Hebrews or that added to some hearts in Moses' canon. Uh and, and it goes on and on. If you start to doubting the scripture because of other analysis from the so-called experts with all their paper on the wall, you're going to doubt the whole word of God, and you won't have enough faith to even be saved. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. That's, That's right. right. I like that. And so saying those things and getting to back to where we are with those things being said, the, the, the Christian today with the onslaught of evil spirits as the Holy Spirit begins to reel back, and and things going the way they're going and more and more people becoming possessed more and more christians denying mm-hmm. the spiritual uh, work of satan uh, i i have i have a number of uh 
close people to me. Some people are are DJs at our radio station, mm -hmm. and and they they would they they will be standing before God, and that's when they'll finally hear for the first time that they had the the demon of addiction causing them to smoke their whole lives away. Mm -hmm. That's that's the kind of. Uh, that kind of denial opens the door, and that kind of denial causes the church to be watered down among its, amongst its elect. Tares, of course they're watered down. Mm -hmm. But when the, the elect people are so clueless, uh, Jesus says, here's the keys to the kingdom, binding and loosing. Binding what? Demons. Mm -hmm. Loosing the angels of heaven, the power of God. Right. Whatever, whatever we need and God will allow us to loose on the enemy. Well, that's the key, the keys to heaven, according to Jesus Christ. Right. I, I, I would say that if you were to put a questionnaire in front of most people, most Christian people, church, never miss church people, they, they, don't, they don't ever use that, don't know about it. But they'll, they'll, they'll call upon God. They'll pray to God, and they'll ask God to, to heal their wife or their son or, or, or whoever they're praying for, the, the point that they're missing is God's given us instructions, but your worldview is skewed so you don't see those instructions. And those instructions, we have, we have Bible authors, um, and I, I actually didn't bring this page in, but I had originally put together a page of about 20 books of the Bible, like the book of Judges refers to the book of Jasher. Yeah. And well, it, 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 it specifically specifically names it right mm -hmm. in right. there yeah. it says yeah. in the book of jasher isn't it written yes i mean it says all, it in there all of these books that we're talking about are mentioned in god's word so that makes me want to say what's in the book of jasher y'all right if he's referring it let's go read that and see what it's all about if one right. of god's own choosing yeah choosing cho choosing his own chosen endorses it yeah i need to know it right what, what's wrong with the pastor that would tell his flock don't do that yeah and what's wrong with the christian that goes okay and refuses to do it. Something else may be influencing him. Yeah. yeah. Like a spirit. Yeah. Amen. Or they may be a terror and not know it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure. And, and you got to realize they don't know it either. Right. You know, so they don't understand, you know, that the the knowledge, you know, my people perish for lack of knowledge. knowledge. Right. So the more you, I mean, you, you know, you, I think you have to be wise as serpent, harmless as does. I think you have to be careful at what you take in. But if God's leading you in that direction and he's trying to open your eyes up, you know, again, like I said, there are there are other authors other than the scriptures that's going to give us their testimony, saying this is what God has shown me, and as long as it lines up with the Bible, then we go and we build off. We stand on their shoulders. And yes, the greatest true. the greatest yeah. deceiver is one that is himself deceived, right? Because he absolutely believes that what he is doing is for the betterment, say, of his congregation or of his friends and family. He's protecting them from something that he believes is evil. But that didn't make it evil just because he believed it was evil. We got about a lot, three minutes. A lot, lot of that, a, a lot of that comes from his ignorance, and not, not willful ignorance, I would suppose, but taught ignorance right. and taught rejection from something that is good and is holy, and uh, because of that, that stereotype is passed on from generation from church member to the next church member and it takes somebody with a great anointing to break that mold because yeah. it's a tra traditional mold and tradition is strong if you don't believe me when jesus oh, yeah. christ left the apostles in charge and filled them with the holy ghost they had the hardest time dragging christians out of the mosaic law well who who was it that tried to take jesus out of the church and stone him mm -hmm. it was his home church his hometown his home church that that means not a single person in his home church knew god because he was God. That's yeah. sad. That's sad and scary. So, so the checks and balances before this break, the checks and balances are those books that the Bible authors refer to and rest on, we should know. And that's the lost books. There are some that are still missing, and there are many fakes. But the ones that the authors mention, those we can safely know we need to know. All right. Let's go ahead and take a break here. Listen at this one here. It's going to be a good one. Are you ready? Let's set this one. Hello, I am Henry Schaefer. Are you tired of those unanswered questions? Sermon messages that are just not relevant? Or are you looking for truth and not opinions? Well, you've tuned in to 99.9 WUCC Williston. 
Now, we have the best in local gospel preaching, and we have a ministry team that has the heartbeat of God. Now, and we're growing every week. Now, make sure that you lock us in on your radio, 99.9 WUCC Williston. And if you have a smartphone or a tablet, you can go over to cwchrist.com. That's cwchrist.com. Look at the red button there. Click on it, and we can stream on with us around the World Wide Web on any smartphone or tablet. Now, thank you for listening to 99.9 WUCC Williston, for we are the voice of truth, and we have the answers you're searching for, messages that are relevant, and they're not just opinions because we are the voice of truth. Thank you for listening. Hi, this is Tim with 99.9 WUCC Williston Aiken Augusta. Our mission is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all over the world. How do we do it? We do it online. That's right. You can listen to us from any computer or smartphone anywhere in the world. Check us out online at cwchrist.com. That's cwchrist.com. And thanks for listening to 99.9 WUCC. All right. We're back to the studios at WUCC. And we're going to um, ask James to... Uh, read a couple of excerpts from different books and we're going to let you read them then we're going to the whole panel here we're going to get everybody to comment on them and we have uh francis with us todd, todd, todd and jt JT. JT. jt steve hall and james price they're in the studio we're talking about the lost books and we want to encourage you to go out and get your copy of the book of enoch yeah uh, amen you, you need you need to know you need to know what else god has for us in these end times all right uh, I, it's it's helped me immeasurably helped me immeasurably yeah so right. uh so be be blessed by getting into this you're stuff. the expert so you go ahead and you got uh, lead us on down this road here all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna give you some some background the book of jubilees that's the one i want to read next the book of jubilees is jubilee stands for a 49 year period and you can actually verify that the Jewish calendar of the world is accurate by starting at page one of the book of Jubilees. Okay. Because from Adam to present, uh, what, what year are we at right now? Five, seven, seven, six. Five, Isn't seven, it? seven, six. Isn't that, it five, seven, seven, six? Yes. Is that where seven, we're at? Seven, seven, mm-hmm. seven, seven. And it's getting ready to, to yeah. change, right? right? Seven, so, seven, seven, seven is coming up, which that's is right. very interesting. Yeah. You do yeah. that numerology there. That's right. That's we know right. a little seven. bit about it, not a whole lot, but a little well, bit. Well, in, in the book of Jubilees, that was my primer. So I would hear uh, Dr. Frank Francis explain things about that, and I was like, that is so very interesting. And then I read the book of Jubilees, and I was like, whoa, it's making sense. Yeah. So I can tell you exactly when uh, such and such, Enoch lived and died. Abraham was born, lived, and died. Nimrod, you know, we don't like Nimrod. It's all in the book of Jubilees. It's all in the book of Jubilees. Get on Jubilees. Downtown. Right, right. Uh, I like that. One of the things that I really <laughs> love about the book of Jubilees is it talks about the, uh, in detail, detail, these different Bible characters that we know. And Abraham is one of them. And I love this prayer. So this is my first excerpt. Okay. And on that night, he prayed. My God, God most high, you alone are my God, for I have chosen you and your domain, for you have created all things, and all things are but your work. Deliver me from evil spirits who have mastery over the thoughts of men, and do not let them lead me astray from you, my God. Make sure I and my seed do not go astray from now on and forever. Then he said, and he goes on from there, but, but that is a, a text from a prayer that is filled with truth. Uh, I did not know the strength, power, uh, numbers of the enemy until I started reading the lost books. But according to the lost books, when you're reading in Genesis about Noah the pre-diluvian times, the, the pre-flood times, the mm-hmm. anti-diluvian times. Those, 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 that, those times, by the time Noah and the ark are ready to go, it is likely that there's not really, beyond them, any true human that has not been tainted 
with Nephilim blood. Yeah. And thinking about the individual hero that Noah was, his friends didn't go, his neighbors didn't go, his servants didn't go, his, he was from the line of Seth. Um, no other Sethites went, just like the children of Cain. None of them went. Uh, it talks about in the book of Enoch, the book of Jubilees, the book of Jasher. Uh, it talks about Rephium and Nephilim and their involvement with the pre- and post-flood world. And, and I don't think that there were any humans left. And we see, we see such a sad picture in today's worldview because we think, Wow, God sure wiped out a lot of a lot of mankind. If there, a lot of innocent people. Yeah, if there was seven billion uh, before during that great time, and there's seven billion, that's a lot of death. None of those people were human anymore. Yeah, and and that's what we get from the lost books. It answers questions. I didn't know. So, so you're saying for those who are listening out there going, what are they talking about? This is what opened our eyes up, Stephen, my uh, eyes up about a lot of this, is that we were searching. Where did demons come from? Yep. Where, if there are demons, where do they come from? And, of course, there's all type of theories where that is. But those people or those beings, uh, men and women, children, whatever, that were not fully human when they died, That's if right. they were mixed with angels That's right. that had fallen, that there's no angelic being going to be redeemed. That's right. So, even if they're mixed with whatever. Right. So when they died. In the Old Testament, when God told Joshua, kill everyone, women, children, men, cattle, kill everyone, it was because they were all Nephilim. Mm -hmm. Maybe there were a headquarters central, the royalty, the hierarchy was true 100% Nephilim, maybe giants or something else twisted like what we find in Peru, those skeletons with the big heads. Yeah, elongated heads. That's right. Mm -hmm. those, those were Nephilim, we know without a doubt. But when you look at the, the Old Testament and you're reading that, you're thinking, wow, why do you, why do you kill everyone? I understand, I understand why Saul saved the cattle, but that's, that's him being absolutely disobedient to God. Right. And knowing better and choosing. Oh, and he kept uh, Agag. Agag. Was it Agag? Who was a giant. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. kept that king. That's right. And he so what Samuel and do? Samuel went over and killed him. He had to put Samuel. Yeah. A, a man of God had to become a murderer right mm -hmm. there, although this was not a human. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. You know, but but I, I, everything about disobedience has many levels and layers of repercussions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so we we find this out about... Uh, Abraham, he, he says, if, if we're grafted into the family of Abraham, by the grace of God we are, uh, he says, deliver me from evil spirits. They master my thoughts. Make sure my seed do not go astray. Yeah. Well, hallelujah, because it's that kind of prayer that's causing this conversation now. It's God answering yep. prayer. God answering that's his right. prayer. That's right. Amen. Uh, there's, well, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, we're the children of Abraham by faith. I mean, I don't know if anybody's Jewish here, but uh, my brown, my uh, brown, my uh, my lack of having brown eyes and blue tail, probably where I'm from. And James has got the same color. So he's got red hair. He's more tied into this stuff than <laughs> I am. But all I'm saying is, just by faith, and uh, that's how we become the children of Abraham, because we're the spiritual offspring, as Isaac was, and not that physical offspring, because we put our trust in Jesus Christ. We're born again of the Spirit, and the Spirit is uh, is alive in us because of our faith as Abraham had, so we have. So it's not by right of birth, as in the Jew would say, but it is by right of faith, as in Abraham was justified before he was ever given the covenant of circumcision. And we're grafted in. And then we're grafted in. So here's uh, one of the things that Brother Schaefer has mentioned, that when we started this, we, you know, we talk a lot, and me and Brother Schaefer, and we're thinking, well, we need to understand demons to the best of our ability. And then that brings us to the book, of Enoch. That's right. And once I had read Enoch, I, I got Brother Schaefer online and said, Brother Schaefer, I think I found some answers here. Yeah. And we read that and discussed that, and it clicked in my spirit. It clicked in my mind. 
And uh, it was like the Lord said, now here's the playbook you need to know if you want to know your enemy. This right. is how it all, this is how all these spirits got on the earth. That's right. It's, it's, it, it's not just that those people were all human. They were a mixed breed of angelic seed with humanity. That's and right. now they were the offspring of the Nephilim. So and they're smarter than us. They're smarter than us. And if we take every single Nephilim and Nephilim mixed, every, every prodigy of the watchers mm -hmm. through marriage, uh, you know, things that happen to people that make them uh, become Nephilim. And we look at that for every single pre-flood uh, a lot of Christian scientists would say that there were possibly the same population then mm -hmm. as there are now. So you subtract eight from that population, and that's eight people that went onto the, the ark, and then everyone else was likely Nephilim. And then you've got all the generations. Before. Mm -hmm. Before. Yeah. During, during their lifespan from right. Adam to Noah, uh, every single generation of Cain, then you've got you've got the post flood when Nimrod started all this up again, mm -hmm. and and he did. And you're thinking, what a knucklehead! No wonder his name's Nimrod. Yeah, he he opened the door for Satan to be directly involved with humanity again. again now, right. not mm -hmm. at the same level, but we do still find today the same Nephilim described in here as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it yep. be. In the end times, it's, right. it, I did not quote that correctly at the end, but but Jesus says it's coming, it's right. coming, yeah. and we're seeing those same things now. Uh, I, I just saw a, this is just a small, quick uh, excerpt, but I just saw a small, little, tiny, five centimeter long skeleton of a something. Some people would call it a fairy, and uh, and and did it have two horns? No, no. no. Yes, I've and, seen some stuff like that. And some scientists found it in a peregrine, a peregrine falcon's nest. Mm -hmm. So this peregrine falcon uh, nibbled off its arms and, and legs uh, and then was like, you know, there's something disgusting about this and left it. And so this skeleton was in there. And it's, it's, it's a little tiny, tiny five centimeter, that's two and a half inches tall mm -hmm. human that's mm -hmm. nasty yeah. nasty yeah. and there's stuff like that all over the earth yeah. and we're making more of them mm -hmm. you know we they're doing it in labs uh you know the whole all those secret things that we're not told about that shadow but, governments yes that we're well, you building know, you know and i just hybrids. you know and i just saw some things to where uh this president that we're in now where george bush was in there he had stopped certain funds going to to certain um labs to where they would mix humans and animals together mm -hmm. that he said no 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 we ain't doing this but then when obama came in and it doesn't matter what president it's just the agenda of the enemy yeah it is so that he just comes in now the funds are able to be routed our funds government funds are routed into uh human and animal hybrids right they're working together to bring about cures right they, they're trying to work cures out but all along they're creating um host that are not human anymore and if that's happening then what about the angels and them getting involved with humans animal human animal and angelic um mixtures in our lifetime that's what we're going to see and then those demons demons that are out there are looking for a body to get in right and they're going to use those as a host to be able to work their wicked deeds in and in, in our in our generations and they're the ones that say you don't need to bother reading the lost books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me throw something in real quick because we've done this on a show, or I did on my show in the last days, and that is uh, these genetically modified salmon that they've got in Canada. They grow twice as big in half the time, all right, and uh, they reproduce. And they ask them, now these are on the market right now, and they do not have to be listed as GMO, not in America, not up there either. It's absolute. you can go I already to see our where FDA. you're going, brother. You can go to our FDA web, website, website, and you can see it. They use you it as an illustration. That. And you eat it, and it becomes part of you. Okay, but here's another thing. This is what the science says. If, you, if these things accidentally get out, if these salmon get out into the ocean, they are going to spawn with our native salmon, and the native salmon in, I think it was 10 years, will never be the same salmon again. They will pollute and contaminate the whole chain. So if you go back to the Noah thing, you exactly. see it happened in Noah. And exactly. if you come into our day, right. you're seeing mutations that are being built, manufactured, 
from demonic mm-hmm. input into humans' brain right. that's going to produce more of the same Nephilim, if you want to use that word in our generation, uh, that will be un, un, uh, re, un, uh, redeemable. Because yeah. they're not human. They weren't yeah. supposed to be here to start with. Right. Wow. And I'll just let you go from there. Well, that you nailed it. And so, so then, and it, it always comes down to this. Um, I have uh, pastors that say to me, oh, so you want me to teach more prophecy in my church? No, no. This, this is not, you, you don't go to the prophecy sections of your Bible, which are extremely ignored. Yeah. Two-thirds of the Bible is prophecy. Um, and and most services stay in the New Testament. Uh, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, we need to know uh, as much about every single section of our Bible as possible. But quit doing the same old, same old that every other pastor is going to give you their blessing on. And don't think the answer is, I need to teach my church prophecy. You need to ch- t- <laughs> you need to teach your church, the correct worldview, because you're not going to have time to salvage when the enemy is coming in and having as many of your church people as possible take the mark. And give up. They're just going to give up. That's right. Once they've taken the mark or given up even before then, which is most tears, almost every tear in the church, then, then they, you've lost them. You've lost them. The answer is in them knowing where we come from, where we're going. You don't get all of that. My answers did not, for my first 20 years of my life, I'll tell you, I've I've had other people identify with this. I did not go to Sunday school. My mom and dad would drop me off as a five-year-old and say, run along to Sunday school. And I'd, I'd run along, and then when I got to the door, I'd take a left. I'd hide in the bushes. I'd take my uh, offering and go to the gas station and buy candy that's what i did for years until until i'm out of high school as soon as i got my driver's license i was released i never had to go to church again so at age 20 a buddy of mine that i had formerly smoked pot with says james you're on your way to hell no i'm not i said the prayer in vacation bible school at age five no no james you're on your way to hell You are going to hell. Jesus is not your Lord, your Savior, your Master. You don't live for him every day. You're going to hell. Well, how could I refute that? He's right. I I sat there going, oh, no. He's right. He's right. So I had been taught the Bible. I I went to Christian school and church from the, you know, time I started school until I graduated. And it I, I watched all these tears around me live a different lifestyle than the, what they were professing. Mm-hmm. I didn't want any part of the God that they talked about. But when I came to Christ from my drug-using buddy, when he brought me to Christ, then I wanted to know more. Well, that more is what Satan has chiseled out. And it's essential. It's essential now. Yeah. It's essential. I agree. I got a There's, quick question for you. One of our uh, listeners listening live right now sent me a uh, text and asked me a question uh, concerning uh, the book of James, uh, the secret book of James, excuse me, the secret book of James, the gospel of Thomas, the book of Thomas, and uh, the secret book of John. And uh, I imagine that There's maybe, also the gospel of Judas Iscariot. Yeah, yeah and, and that's Thomas, one of the Thomas things. Have one? And Thomas, Thomas yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what I was, my idea is since it's not mentioned anywhere else in the Gospels, that maybe it needs to be put on a different level than what we're talking about. Is that correct? Or, or rejected entirely. And so um, I appreciate that person asking that question because I had to ask myself that question. Uh-huh. Here, here's how that went. Here's what God provided me with a lot of prayer. If it doesn't glorify me and if it says anything that doesn't line up with Scripture, it's not true. Okay. Um, the don't get hung up on the details like like the uh, uh, if the age of the person going from uh, the Hebrew through the different people that wrote it all these different years the different translations and then its way making it into English isn't exact because it hasn't been these have not been kept sacred like 
the remaining 66 books, there are some things in here, some small details that may be incorrect, but they don't affect the picture. Does it glorify God? Does it line up with Scripture? Okay. On the other hand, there, the, the book of the, I think it's the Gospel of John, is that, is that what you called it? Uh, the no, 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 no. The sacred this, yeah. gospel, I think. Yeah, yeah. There's, and, and that's what I like about this particular version I use. It's all of them. It's all of the lost and rejected text, the okay. Apocrypha. The Why don't you give the name of that book so our listeners will know? Well, it's the Lost Books of the Bible. The and Lost Books of the Bible. By... And it's the rejected text. And it's, okay. it, was, it was compiled and translated by Dr. Edward Hammond, who is from Australia. Okay. And he's retired, and he spent his life... Um, um, teaching in college and pastoring and and writing Aramaic Hebrew and and uh, uh, Aramaic Hebrew and Greek. Greek. Uh, what was his name one more time? Dr. Edward Hammond. And what's the name of it? The Lost Books of the Bible. The reject the rejected text Apocrypha and Pseudepigrapha. So so in in it and and i'm thankful that god i'm thankful that god gives us as a matter of fact that that leads me to a text in god's word okay uh first john chapter two it's the last couple of verses beginning at verse 26 john is writing the holy spirit is speaking i write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you but the anointing that you receive from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. We have the same Holy Spirit that was the teacher of John the Baptist, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Every single, every single God follower didn't get there if if they if they were one of god's leaders uh a, a author of a book a prophet a writer they didn't rely on something that they learned from the pulpit by another man speaking they learned it directly from god god took john the baptist out into the uh, wilderness he spoke truth god took moses out into the wilderness and he spoke truth it all lines up. It all matches. The Holy Spirit is actually our teacher, and you've got to let the Holy Spirit teach. It says that in First John. Amen. And then when you look at that from the standpoint of these these different texts, you can read uh, so much detailed information to fit these pieces together. Uh, I, I I have not had a druid that wants to have an argument which is every druid I've ever talked to. I've not had a druid try to, try to put together an argument where I can't say, you know, uh, based on the book of Enoch, it says something absolutely completely different. Mm -hmm. And explain that to them in a way that their mouth isn't dropped open because they, haven't, they have no background looking at God's remaining 66 books alone where they have anything to offer they have no more guns to shoot cannons they can reject god yep and we are not to argue you know the holy spirit doesn't argue the holy spirit's the one that does that but you can always provide an answer and a lot of those answers are provided from the lost books because that's our our secondary information that they're not clued into and that's you know it's it's paramount um while and Unless you want to lead this um, while Pastor schaefer has gone, I'll, yeah. I'll press on. Yeah, let's press on. But let me throw some things uh, maybe your way uh, or the, the panel's way at least. When we uh, talk to a lot of people about, and I've talked to my church at the Johnson Church of God about the book of Enoch, not everybody you know, wants to get on board. They have the reservation uh, that you mentioned earlier uh, because it's kind of been drilled in them. You know, drilled. You trust this. This is the absolute uh, faithful 66 books and i do not dispute that right i do not dispute me that. neither and that's 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 our foundation that's our foundation and what i tell uh, my congregation is this well i believe that's absolutely true and everything that you accept about jesus about god you need to use that as your foundation and if it doesn't fit square on the foundation of the bible the teachings of jesus uh the law of moses the life of abraham if it doesn't sit squarely then don't try to make it fit 
But if it will fit, then you need to consider it as at least commentary that is ancient and closer to the original source than we will ever be. And, you know, most all scholars will tell you the closer you get to the original source on any document, the more likely it is authentic or, or close to what really happened. And the further you get away from the original tale, a repeat of the repeat, the less likely it is to be accurate. Right. And so with that thought in mind, I tried to say, use at least the book of Enoch as a commentary that is older than any commentary you've ever heard. Yeah. Hmm. And see if that doesn't add something to your scriptures when you began to study the book of Genesis. For, for, because for me, it opened my mind up, but, it, but I have a very closed mind. Ask my wife. She'll tell all of you the same. <laughs> I have a very closed mind. And it took God's crowbar to open up a little bit of crack so that he could put in some new stuff that would take me further than I had been taken just with the old 60s. And I have no, listen, I would tell all my listeners, you read them 66 books and you learn them. Right. And then you go looking at other stuff. Yeah, if they you saved our grandparents. Bible, yes, if you don't know your Bible, don't go getting all kind of everybody else's ideas Amen. until you get the foundation. Once right. you get that foundation and you got your head wrapped around it, then you can start adding to it. All those beautiful shingles, all those yeah. beautiful uh, decorative things in the in the house that makes a uh, house a home and makes it beautiful and more complete. Right. Uh, speaking of, I'm, I'm going to read a section now from the book of Jasher. Okay. Now, the book of Jasher gets tons of hate, tons of hate. And the reason why is because Joseph Smith, the beginner of the Mormon church, bought a copy of the book of Jasher and put it in the Book of Mormon. But you don't stop right then and go, well, I reject it. It, it. it existed long before Joseph Smith was born. Just because he put it into his Bible to add some credibility, the Book of Mormon does not make the Book of Mormon true. When you, when you get beyond what you find in three minutes on the Internet, you will find that the Book of Jasher has been around for a long time. The author is unknown. And like the Book of Enoch, it's, it's one of the Old Old Testaments. The, uh, the, the people that wrote the Old Testament knew it. In the book of Jasher, this, this blows me away. I did not know this. You want to say something, John? Well, what page are you on? Because I, I, have, I have what you have right here, so I'm, I'm wanting to follow along with you. Well, I'm looking at uh, page 286, chapter, um, chapter 16. And it, it correlates with Genesis, it correlates with Genesis 14. And in that, this blew me away. I mean, this blew me away. According to the book of Jasher, Shem is Melchizedek. Scripturally, and that I've works heard that. out. That's not new for me. I've already heard that. But, but I, I was never told that in a mm-hmm. church. In all my years of going to a, a church I was always told, well, nobody knows who Melchizedek is. Mm -hmm. And we don't know why Abraham revered him. Well, in the lost books, it's very clear. That was Shem. And he and his father Noah lived for many years after the flood in, guess where, their city, Mm -hmm. Salem, which is Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The city of Noah became Salem. And it says in the book of Jasher, that's why it says having neither father nor, nor more than their lineage because all of their lineage was wiped out pre-flood. Their, pre-flood. Uh, so right. you kind of understand. He had this no makes genealogy. Sense if you've got the info behind it. Now, it makes sense to me because I've already heard it. That's right. And, and Melchizedek, uh, Jesus is of the order of Melchizedek. He's the Melchizedek priest. So, so I can't tell you, I probably heard it 20, 30 times growing up. And, and into just probably until I, I left church. We don't know who Melchizedek is, but Abraham, he revered him. And he did these things. And then we hear that story in Genesis 14 where he went and fought the wars against the kings. And we don't know who those kings are. But these kings were giants. One of the kings was Nimrod, the mighty man. His name in the Bible has been changed to his real name. It's one of the unusual places where instead of saying Nimrod, they use his real name. But, but Abraham conquered them, and then he goes to Shem, his foster dad, who he lived with until he was in his 60s. 
And he says, here's 10% of everything, everything we got from this battle. I, I praise God. I mean, it, it, it just makes sense. It's yeah. so good. It's so good. What else do we have to, to talk about? I, I, can, I can go on to another one, but we're getting close to a break. Well, we're getting close to a uh, top of the hour, so that hour is gone. We, t- we call it the fastest hour. It's in, in the scriptures in history. <laughs> so let's do this here. I want you to um, uh, go ahead and tell them what books that they need to buy and then tell them where they need to uh, pick up reading at. And uh, then we're going to see about uh, close of this hour out. And if y'all want to go another one, we'll let y'all, y'all do one more as well. So go yeah. ahead and do that so we can break it up just like this. Well, I'd recommend I'd recommend all of the lost books, the Apocrypha, the Pseudopigra, Pseudopigrapha, because the the... Not all of them are true, but the Holy Spirit will immediately show you which ones aren't true. As soon as you hit on it, you'll be like, ooh, that, that, one's, that one's inaccurate, but it's good for you to know it because there's a lot of false religions that stand on that stuff. All right. So, so when you know it, you're safe. But T- Tell them the author again. The, the man that compiled this, my favorite translation is written by Dr. Edward Hammond, and, and I don't know him. He's an Australian. I don't get any cut. So, so <laughs> all right, and then and then at the at a minimum, if you're going to use your phone to look these up, you need to know Enoch, the Book of Jubilees, the Book of Jasher, uh, the Book of Ezra four. We haven't even talked about Ezra four, but Ezra four should be in our Bible side by side with the Book of Revelation. It's so strong. Ezra four mentions the eagle which stands for america oh, wow. in the end times and wow it mentions it it's 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 essential we know this stuff all today. right let's go ahead well all right well doctor good to have you with us here thank you todd todd thank gotta you. have you with us here jt as well good to be here all right and we're gonna close this hour out and i'm gonna let y'all go on we'll take a break if we want to and then we'll let y'all go in with another one here let me go ahead and get this here this closed out y'all ready Ready. Here we go here. Thank you for tuning in today. We've been your hosts, Henry Schaefer and Steve Hall. The end times are here. Anything is possible. Are you ready? Don't miss the next episode of Special Edition, End Time Revelation.